the very beginning, when Dad started out in the 40s, he would go to the lumber yards and he would he would get basically the cutoffs from the lumber industry that nobody wanted that would you know had lots of cracks and holes and you know curves and and you couldn't make a nice straight plank out of. In the 40s, free form meant a man-made shape like the Whitacombe pieces, and he was using free form as uh, a form which was created by nature that each one was different and he said in the beginning people didn't get what he was doing and so he got some of the the wood that um, nobody wanted and I'm sure he got it for a better price than buying the, the real lumber. This is the Conoid studio. Yeah, the first, the early buildings were not so unusual as the ones with the shell roofs. He got really interested in uh, HP shells uh, in 1956. It's always really, really nice to come back here because it's peaceful and quiet. And the architecture also is open to the out of doors. You're not closed off from the outside. And, and that's very much a part of the Japanese architectural way of thinking. Collected a whole pile of wood. It was in need of being processed and dried and covered and taken care of. I think he thought he was never going to die either, you know. And so when he did die, the, the people who had been so kind and processed our lumber decided they wanted the lumber out of there. Dad was gone now, and they, it was taking up too much space in their lumber yard, and they they wanted it somewhere else. So we didn't have anywhere to put it. At one point, I thought this is just too much trouble. I don't have any place to put this wood. Maybe we should just sell it. And I thought, wait a minute, this is my dad's legacy. This is the lumber he purchased. This is the way he wanted it milled. Um, I could sell it, but there won't be any more. So we decided we better keep it. I think it was Shoji Hamada who, who said, um, that even though there is a variety of sameness, even though you do the same thing over and over again, each time you do it, your hands may be a little bit different. You know, everything is a little bit different, um, even though you're doing the same thing over and over again. One of the sofas that Dad had done for Whitacombe, and um, I, that we don't usually do sofas, you know, with cushions front and back and, you know, a long thing. So I thought that would be interesting to put into the production. It's basically my father's design that he did for Woody Mueller. That's a bookcase that he called the Chigai Dana, which is an adaptation of a shelving system from Japanese architecture. And Woody Mueller also produced that in the late 1950s as well, and hasn't been done since. So it's kind of neat. I'd like to do that again. So I said, we ought, I think we ought to do something uh, to do with music and harmony and proportion. In the, you know that happens in sound as well as visually, and she says, "Oh, I have a book on harmonograph," and I said, "What's a harmonograph?" And she said, "Oh, it's this, this little machine that they invented in the 19th century, and if you subject it to different vibrations and, and different um, tones, it will react in different ways and draw different shapes." Anyway, she discovered that one of the forms created by the harmonograph was almost exactly the same as my father's Whitacombe Mueller drop leaf table. It's kind of nice to feel that dad's there behind my shoulder when we work, but it's also exciting. You know, sometimes you go through a pile of wood in the basement or out in the shed or something, and it's got dad's writing on it. And it's, you know, sort of has, a, sometimes it'll have a little sketch and, you know, somebody's name sometimes. and. It has an idea of what he wanted to do with that particular piece of lumber because when he milled the lumber, he, he had a pretty good idea what that that plank of that particular log was going to be when it grew up. One of the pieces I did for the show in Toronto is made from a piece of wood which has been down in the basement for ages, and it had Dad's lines on it. It was one of those beautiful, beautiful figured pieces of walnut with no free edges. But Dad saved the heartwood where this beautiful figure was and thought it would make a nice table. So we made a table out of that following my father's lines and that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm.